Right, okay, now you walk in. This extreme dog lover shares a house with 60 of them. My house isn't mine as such. They pretty much dictate how things are in the house. There is some damage. That's just how they are, and that is what happens when you've got a house full of that many dogs. Having 60 housemates might seem excessive. But that's just the ones that live indoors. Another 46 live in outbuildings. That one's Scarlett. That's Idris. That's Bruce. That's Roy. Giving her a grand total of 106. This is Ricky. He's deaf, so you can say whatever you like to him. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, nobody else in this country has this many all living together. Oh. No, 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 get that. Right, let's clear this up then. I suppose I am a bit of an obsessive personality, to be honest. It doesn't look like it, I know, but I used to be really quite obsessive about cleanliness and it actually made me quite stressed and not very happy. Come on, darlings, out of the way. I've actually got a splitting headache. Now I am more laid back about it. As long as the animals are happy and if I'm not stressed, then they're not stressed. If they do bring mud in or if they do mess in the house, it's not really the end of the world. There are more important things to be worried about. <laughs> Tamara sees no issue with her lifestyle. It would be lovely to have an immaculate, lovely house all the time, but if it's a choice between a lovely, immaculate house or having the dogs, I would still choose the dogs. I certainly don't want people thinking that the dogs aren't doing well out of it because they're not in a nice environment and they're not happy and they're not enjoying themselves. And I don't particularly want people looking down at how terrible the house looks. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm the one that lives there. I sleep with them all as well, which I also get criticism about. But I'm not really that fussed about what other people think. I wouldn't have had my life how I have if I was that bothered about what anybody else thought. <laughs> My family, we've always had a lot of animals. I just need to get the food from outside, so do you want to sort of stand back a bit, because otherwise it'll be a problem at the gate? People used to bring us animals, and we've all taken it to slightly different levels. I think there's probably a degree of insanity running through the family. I personally haven't got much issue with insanity, and people have called me mad since I was a kid. Enzo! No. Sometimes madness and not being like the rest of the world, I think, is a bit of an added advantage and not necessarily something to be ashamed of, so I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. And Tamara is content with just her 106 dogs for company. I wouldn't want to live without animals, but I'm very happy living without people. He is very cuddly. He? Hancha. I don't ever get lonely, but I'm sure if you took all the animals away, then it would be pretty unbearable. <laughs> At the moment, I've got 106. They do like me, which is a bit of a bonus. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be living here with the dogs if I couldn't do it in the way that the dogs have as much freedom as I can give them. I can't stand animals being in cages. I don't really like animals in captivity, full stop. They can choose what they want to do, when they want to eat, when they want to sleep, when they want to go in the house, when they don't. But this is no ordinary pack of dogs. Hey, hey, hey! Ricky! Don't you dare! Most have come to her with serious behavioural issues. Hey, hey, hey! Idris! What have I told you? Some of the dogs that are here have previously in the past bitten. Sula! They are the worst end of the scale that have got problems. Hey! It doesn't mean that if somebody goes up to them, they're going to get savaged. 
Yeah, but it was your own fault. It's because you keep picking on him. There are ones that don't particularly like each other. Some of them, you can let them play and get quite rough, and others, if they get overexcited, then it will turn nasty. And it's like having an awful load of children. One of my aunts used to always say, the children seem quiet, go and see what they're doing. And, I mean, that does apply a bit with the dogs. Despite the risks, Tamara's unconditional love for all dogs means she just can't say no to new ones. One of the things that I'm often accused of being is being a hoarder. But people come to me as the last resort and then tend to say things like, if you don't take them, we're going to have them put down. You're essentially standing there with the power of life and death. And to put an animal down just because it's an inconvenience, that makes me feel ill. You think, well, it is just that one more, but of course it's always that one more and then another one more and another one more. Tamara relies on donations to fund the dog's care. But with the average dog in the UK costing £21,000 over its lifetime, unsurprisingly, she's running low on cash and space. Hello there, you'll have to put up with a bit of dog noise because I've got quite a few dogs around me. Overstretched owner of 106 dogs, Tamara, is catching up with her mother. You know, I am exceedingly worried about this. With over 100 mouths to feed and short of donations, Tamara is struggling financially. Okie dokie, I'll see you on Friday then. Bye then. Okay, bye. She used to work four jobs to support the dogs. I've done loads of exciting stuff. Post office, riding school, night cashier at the garage, teacher, home office. She then successfully applied to become a registered charity, enabling her to keep all her dogs. But the authorities are unhappy with how she's been running the business side of things. Blakey! Stop it! Until they agree on how she administers the charity, she can't do any new fundraising. I'm not prepared to forfeit what I think is vital for the animals just to be able to carry on. Tamara may have to consider a lonely future. You have to reach a point where you say it's just not right. Then you are better off arguably saying, right, that's it. If an agreement isn't reached with the authorities, she might be forced to shut and could face a life without her dogs. It's very difficult to be able to know for certain into the future. I certainly don't want to be the sort of person that gets raided and finds that all the animals are in a terrible situation because you can't cope. And sadly, it could become a very stressful, complicated, difficult decision. Two dogs have turned up. Prue and Sally will make it up to 108. It's all right, it's OK. They will share a room in the loft. It's all right, my darling. Until they adjust to being in her pack. There's a good girl. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of putting a uh, feather bed in here and they opened it out. It's taking ages to get rid of all the feathers. Oh, good girls. Hey, good girls. I won't deny that it is nice when you take a dog in. They then think you're the bee's knees and you're the best thing since sliced bread. It's all right. I know. It's all a bit scary, isn't it? Hey, it's all a bit scary. Tamara could take the easy way out of her predicament. Hola! And give it all up. But she isn't ready to do that. I'm going to carry on. I don't think this is perfect, but I don't think any of them are suffering or unhappy. So I don't really have a choice to make. I don't ever think that this is a sacrifice or I'm doing anything particularly marvellous because this is what I always wanted to do and I love it. 